Scott here. Um, I'm really excited to bring uh, to bring the first episode of a new series I'm doing. Uh, for those of you that know me, um, you may know that my personal thesis is the fastest way to get where we want to go is is people. And within that vein, the fastest way that we can learn is is through other people, and, and whether that be in their mistakes or their successes. Uh, so I'm going to be interviewing. Uh, young people, old people, people that have just done really cool things um, with the hope that everyone who watches these interviews uh, has a better chance of setting out to achieve uh, what they want to. Um, so my first interview is with Alex Taub, a, a biz dev champ, um, a big guy in New York Tech, and uh, currently uh, who's leading uh, online business development for Dwala, um, which is a payment startup. And in the following episode, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but uh, a few cool things you'll learn is is a little bit about Alex's background, how he broke into New York Tech using a strategy that I highly recommend anybody who wants to break into a startup tries to emulate. Um, you'll also learn a little bit about how Alex built this incredible personal brand around business development, uh, which has afforded him just a ton of cool opportunities, if that's something that you're interested in. And lastly, we'll just hear a little bit about what Alex is up to at Dwala. Uh, so with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do a quick housekeeping note here. Um, I totally botched the tech on this interview. Uh, I tried to be really fancy and get this cool microphone. And so the sound was going to be good. And it actually just totally ended up not working. So the sound on my end is, is not very good. It's pretty low. Um, in addition, I had intended for this interview to be side by side and uh, f for whatever reason all we captured on the Skype call was was only Alex uh, but that's okay because he's extremely handsome and has a lot more interesting things to say than I do um, so despite these shortcomings uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, push this out um, and the reason is I just think there's a whole lot that people can learn um, from Alex in the interview and and secondly you know I think anybody who's interested in content, and creating it needs to realize that the most important thing is just shipping. Um, it's not about making it perfect. It's just about getting it out there. And ultimately, the only way to achieve mastery, the only way to step your game up is consistently shipping. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I hope you guys enjoy and uh, look forward to another interview coming soon. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I think like regardless if people are interested in learning about business development or, or breaking into startups or blogging or building a personal brand, I think, I think you have a ton of awesome stuff to offer. And I guess first I, I would love just, and I don't even know if I know this, but I would love just to kind of yeah. hear, you know, how you got your start. Take me back to day one. When, when yeah. did you first get into tech and, and what, what was yeah. it like? So, uh, I grew up in the city and, um, I originally thought I wanted to go to Wall Street. Uh, my dad, you know, was on Wall Street, and uh, I mean, he was more an entrepreneurial Wall Streeter. So he was, he was a broker, but he was a uh, he was a stockbroker back in the '80s and '90s when that meant, you know, getting your clients and then managing what stocks they chose. So he would he'd be a picker. So he was sort of like a sales slash broker. Um, so he picked and he managed and. Um, and he grew up, he grew a nice little practice, uh, I mean, a nice little business. Um, and then he was also entrepreneurial in the nineties. He started investing in startup companies. So awesome. it was always what was like, what was at the table? It was always what was talking about. Um, just like, uh, wall street. So I, I originally thought I wanted to do that. I, I did two internships when I was in college, one at UBS, one at Credit Suisse, realized that, that was not what I wanted to do. Um, and I also interned at Viacom and MTV Networks, also realized that was not what I wanted to do. Um, and then uh, I started uh, I started a company with two friends in college, uh, learned a lot of good lessons of what not to do, um, but we were trying to build a company called ETM, uh, an Entertainment Teller Machine. We were trying to put... Um, fully sort of digital um, uh, like kiosk machines in airports so that when you're waiting for your, your flight, you can get a movie like on the go. That's not ambitious at all. Yeah, it was, first of all, it was like stupid ambitious where it was like, you had to build like the, the hardware, software, 
secure deals with like labels, uh, networks, um, and studios, and get the locations. It was like, and we had no one technical on the team. It was three business guys. That's awesome. Classic college startup. Um, Classic. So anyway, long story short, we raised a little bit of money, um, basically to some like high net worth individuals thought we were we were interesting group of guys. They wanted to see how far we can go. So we raised a little bit of money. Ended up not working out, but I learned a lot. I started to do a lot of deal. I, I like I was I got as close to getting in like O'Hare Airport like as a 18 year old. Oh, cut, um, cutting your teeth at a young age. I love it. Yeah. So and then like Paramount was interested in like potentially doing something with us, but we didn't have a product. So every time they'd want us to fly out and do demos, they're like, "Yeah, this is a really good idea. We'd love to do this." Um, so you, it was like you were, you were pre-selling unintentionally. Yes, yeah, it was smoke and mirrors, man. Nice. Um, make a long story short, I uh, I ended up meeting a cool startup in, uh, at a conference um, a company called Medium. They were based in Israel. And I started to set up, like, well, I got along with them really well. And then I started setting up meetings for them whenever they were in town. So I, I, send out, I set up, you know, meetings with, and I, I literally, like, networked my, my ass off to just get, like, one or two meetings for them when they came to New York. So they were based in Israel. And this, they is, were, this is before you even started working for them? This is when I was a senior in college. Love it. Love it. So, um... I was a senior in college. I was going to like the New York Tech meetup. I was I, I knew I was interested in tech after I started started working on the company. I knew this is what I wanted to do. Um, but I uh, my senior my senior year I started setting up meetings for them before I started working with them. I started saying, "Hey, you should meet these guys," and then I would take them into the meetings. So they had raised some seed money, and they they end up raising a, a, a round from Benchmark Capital, a million bucks, and I was just getting. I was getting them into the meetings, and I was, and then I was in the meetings listening to them pitch. And then after a while, after they came to New York, maybe once or twice, I started to take them to the meetings and start and actually pitch. And then after I started taking the meetings to actually pitch, then I started going to the meetings on my own. And then they're like, "When you graduate, we want you to like do our America business development." So I would just go to the, uh, you know, I learned I learned the talking points. I learned like how to pitch and. Um, I mean, I always was always pitching my whole life. Like I was like uh, always selling people on shit. Like, you see, always be closing. Yeah, no, but I was always like just like like pitching people on things, like ideas, like I like pitching my wife to go to the movies rather than you know go to the ballet or something. Sure. So, um, and not that she's into the ballet. I'm just saying, like, oh, I, I'm always, I was always cutting deals with people. Say, okay, I'll do this if you do that. Um, so it always just, it always just came naturally to me, but but anyway, so I, I did that, um, and then I think real quick, I just want to highlight, you know, a lot of people, and I'm sure you have a lot of people too. They ask, how do I get a job at a startup? How do I get a job at a startup? And one of the things that I always say is, you know, act as if you are already have the job. Do things that can be adding value to the company as if you were an employee. And you know what you're just described with this company is literally exactly that, and that's yeah, that's just awesome to hear. So that's why that was the that was the first sort of thing. So I was going to like New York Tech meetups. I was building my network. I was like meeting people. And I was doing some cool stuff. Uh, and I, my whole senior year, I basically was traveling. I, I almost didn't graduate. Um, I missed my graduation. Also, I was in LA, uh, and I traveled a lot. And I and and we got we were in the New York Times. I mean, things happened. It, we never found product market fit. Sure. Um, and then about. They're bringing on some new team members. I didn't really feel like the future of the company. Um, so I reached out to two friends. One was Mark Davis, um, and then the other was Mo Koifman. And Mark, I think his wife just had a baby, so he was totally out of pocket. But Mo just made an investment in a company a few months before called Aviary, and he responded within an hour saying, hey, you know, your timing's pretty good. Uh, I've CC'd Avi and Michael, founders of Aviary. Uh, they're getting too much inbound BD and they need help. Um, you should meet them. So I met Michael the next day and I met Avi like a week later. And then uh, they offered me the job uh, about a day or two later. And uh, I left that company, moved over. I left pretty abruptly. Um, but the company was not in a good 
place. Yeah, so sure. it was it was, uh, it was a wonky situation anyway. But then um, I uh, I left the company, joined Aviary in let's say May May two thousand and. Or May, May, June 2010. Okay. The first three months, I worked on a project called Aviary Education, uh, which was Aviary Tools, but for teachers. Um, I did that, and that was going up pretty well. And then, um, and then we sort of pivoted the business um, into an API platform. Yep. And I got to work on that, building that from scratch with the team, team members there. Uh, took us. We first launched the web API, then the mobile API. Um, all in all, by the time I left, to about a year and you know, ten months later, we've grown from you know zero users on this API platform to six million users. Since I've left, they've gone from six million to twenty-five million, and that was before the Twitter deal. So they're growing very quickly, um, and it was a lot of the things we did early on, all the the infrastructure we built. The help to build a scalable API platform. Um, and what would you say? What, I mean, what kind of? Obviously, I mean that's incredible. That's awesome stuff. What would you say to somebody who, you know, their company they want to do they want to build out an API. They have zero partners. Uh, you know, where do you start? Yeah. So what we did is we spoke to. We had an idea of what we wanted to build. We th we thought well, what, a few things about the industry. We had a few theories. And we went and we proved out our theories by talking to the people that would actually use it. So before we would build a product, we'd make sure we had at least you know five to ten companies that wanted it. Um, so when we built out, the first thing we did is we spoke to everyone in the industry and said, "Hey, if we built a photo editing API for the web, would you use that?" We had a bunch of launch partners. We had Shopify, Imager, a few others. And they said, "Yeah, we would." So we built it and they integrated it. Then we did, went to mobile and we said, "If we built a mobile API, would you use it?" Um, and a bunch of these companies uh, were really excited. And we ended up having 30 launch partners for that. So my advice would be to go and make sure that there's mar uh, a market for what you're doing by asking everyone in the space if they would use it, if you would build it, rather than build it and hoping, hoping they will come. Yeah, and, and um, honestly, it, you know, it sounds exactly like what we've done at Single Platform is you know, really validating the demand. I mean, I know like the whole lean startup is like such a hot word and – and all that validation, I, I always kind of honestly think of it more as a pre-sale. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's awesome stuff. And I think that that's totally the right way to go about it. And we, uh, we, we put things around uh, product launches and got partners for that. And that, that uh, accelerated uh, integrations. So, so, so kind of like, hey, like we're going to be launching this new feature. There's going to be some press around it. Like this would be a cool opportunity for you guys to, to be a part of it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. And then, like, it's really easy to integrate. It's like one, two, three, and you're integrated. And, and that resonated pretty well. That's a, that's, a, that's a classic strategy. I was, thinking, uh, I was thinking about writing a post soon about, like, how to inspire urgency in a deal, um, you know, get, to get a partner to integrate or to get a partner to sign quickly when you're just kind of impending. And, you know, one of the, one of the tricks that we always uh, – or I guess not tricks. It's, it's an authentic strategy is, is you know – position around a product or a press release, a launch of some sort where you know, not only are you going to get this great feature, but you're also going to have the opportunity to you know, get a ton of exposure in TechCrunch or the next web or whatever it may be. Yeah, no, yeah, I've seen it work really well. It's awesome. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is you know, when I think about biz dev in New York, literally, I just, it's Alex Taub. Like, uh, you've done an incredible job kind of building a brand around your specific skill set, your role. And I think it's a, I think it's an awesome example that, uh, you know, of not only being able to give back to the community, provide value to a ton of other people, but also just, you know, create a ton of value for yourself. And I, and I think there's a lot of people out there, you know, whether they're product managers, whether they're marketers, you know, maybe engineers, whatever it may be, uh, who, who would be interested in just learning, like, how, how, did, how did you do that? What are the things that you were doing uh, to ultimately, you know, put yourself in a position uh, to just get that exposure, to build out your network, and, you know, ultimately all those things that make you better at your job? Yeah, so it didn't happen until I started writing, to be perfectly honest. When I started writing, 
it was so much easier to reach the masses. Um, so, I mean, I, I had events. I was doing good stuff like at, at, at AVR. I was closing deals. Like we had some good integrations. We got I got like friendly with a lot of press people, so they were covering us, and we were doing good. And like the company was just like building awesome product. Um, but then I started writing, and then I started like for the first like six months, nobody read my shit. Like nobody. Like I have no comments or notes on like my first three months. You're, you're preaching to the choir, my man. So like it, it's just like I, I just kept at it, and I just found a niche for myself. And some of the topics I've written about already, but I just rewrite about them. And like people like are like, "Wow, this is like such a revelation to me." I'm like, "Yeah, like I wrote about this like a year ago, but like I gave a new spin on it now." Yeah. Um. So, uh, it, it took a while. Like it took a while to to get interest. Um. You know, some things I wish I would have done earlier, like having a like being able to allow people to subscribe to it. Um, I didn't have that until like maybe like six months ago, which was like silly. Because um, Tumblr is not naturally meant for that type of stuff. Um, but then I uh, I started writing and I started putting together events. So I had the BD meetup, that was a big one. I had uh, the Next NY. Oh, no, no, that was BD Media. I had a digital learning series, and then I also had uh, the NYBC. And through these events, and also hackathons, and then through those events, I just got out there. I, I became a good MC, a good public speaker, um, to, to, to do the demos. I, I started teaching my Skillshare classes. So I've taught like 500 students in New York. Um, and... I don't know. I mean, I've stopped. I haven't been able. I haven't had the bandwidth to, to do any of those events recently. But it hasn't slowed down because I continue to write. So I think it's really the writing in the end of the day. Is like everyone has their own vehicle. Everyone has their own unique experience. And I think if you just write about it and, and be honest and like forthcoming with like what's going on, you know, in your experience, people are really receptive to that. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. And yeah, I think it's writing. And I think I think people a lot of people just need to realize like like creating content and writing and blogging it's it's just really a long tail opportunity um it's yeah. a slog like it's not going to be you know i write three to develop an audience it's not going to be i write three posts and then you know if i'm not on the front page of hacker news i'm going to throw in the towel um it's it's consistency it's it's you know just uh, be accepting the fact that it's, that it's a long tail opportunity and if you put in the work there'll be payoffs yeah no I agree um, and, you know, like listen I, I, I left and joined Douala because I was looking for a real big challenge and and, it, and Douala is every challenge and, and a million more uh, it's difficult like it is a hard hard racket um, in a good way like I wanted a challenge I wanted aviary got too easy for me Sure. Like it just was just like it was just so easy. Um and, and listen, some days I'm like, fuck my life, I'm ready to leave. And other days I'm like, like, this is gonna be the biggest thing in the world. And and that's like the life. It's up and down and just startups in general. But you know, you just have to um, you know, obviously stay positive uh about everything and just keep working hard and good shit happens. It's, but um I wish you could see my background right now. Literally I got a new uh a new background on my Mac today from uh, the Accidental Creative Newsletter, and it says it's it's like a bunch of light bulbs, and it says the love of comfort is frequently the enemy of greatness, and you know it's exactly what you're talking about. Um, you know when when things get comfortable, when things get easy. Hold on a second. Sure. Uh, could we leave in eight minutes? Yeah. Is it walkable? No. Sure. Can you leave in five minutes? I just gotta finish something. On a call. Just, just uh, how am I going to get there? Just, just wait five minutes, man. Dude, Sorry, we're, we're going to our seat. No we're going to our seat. No worries. We'll wrap things up here. And I guess just real quick. Uh, yeah. You know, tell me t what. Tell me about like what BD Adwala looks like from an API. Standpoint. Yeah, so it's very similar to Aviary, except it's a payment API. So anywhere where there is a payment online, we want to be. So. E-commerce, gaming, nonprofits, uh, marketplaces. Um, that's the online experience. That's what I lead. There's someone who does offline, which is like government, POS, 
um, retail, etc. So uh, what I focus on is uh, where does Dwalla make sense the most for uh, third-party integration? So we look at things that pay in and pay out. Pay in is someone pays on a third-party website. Pay out is that a company pays out individuals. What's more important, more interesting to me right now is payout, sending mass payments. Uh, it's just really easy to load up one Dwalla account and pay a lot of people rather than have a, a lot of people load up Dwalla accounts and pay one person. So that's what I'm focused on right now. Uh, and that's everything from you know some of our partners like Major League Gaming, uh, GetExec, uh, VHX. Uh, they pay out tons of people. So that's the type of stuff I'm looking for. That's awesome. And like users and usage. So that's the things we find important, users and usage and anything that, that makes that number go up. What's your, what's, who's your entry point? Like, is it, is it the digital product manager? Is it, you know? I try to talk to the technical team okay. straight. Got it. So I try to go directly to the CTO or engineer uh, that will be integrating it. Usually I have to deal with a product or a business person uh, or a founder, but it's typically that. Got it. That's, that's awesome. I definitely want to, want to, you know, offline learn a little bit more about that. So I, yeah. I want to I finish up with one question. Um, sure. So you've been in the game for a while. You've done some cool things. You're obviously going to be on this even cooler things. Uh, in the in the future, you know, what what is one thing that when you started out getting in the scene that you know now that you wish you knew? Uh, never start a tech company without tech people. Got it. But uh, well, well, uh, you know, it sounds like the airport experience was uh, was was a, a good. Yeah, thing. I mean, three business guys trying to start a tech company is the stupidest thing ever. But we learned that. Um, but yeah, uh, that would be the biggest thing. I gotta run because I'm gonna miss my ride, and this is Iowa, and you don't get rides. Um, right, well, do so you want do you want to continue this later? Because I'll be home and on the computer uh, if you want. I actually have a I actually have a very serious dodgeball game, um, so I have to go. But all right. Uh, so people want to find your stuff. AGT on Twitter and Alex's yeah. Random Tech Thoughts is your blog. Yep. Awesome stuff, man. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate uh, really appreciate you hopping on tonight. Yeah. Take care, man. Thanks.